I was 14 years of age when I discovered the fountainhead. My sister had been reading it and she left it on the table and I picked it up and I, I read it and within two sentences I felt hypnotized. That I have no other way to explain it, but I had a sense of an instantaneous, deep, I'll even say spiritual connection with the author of this book. A few years ago, I decided to take a walk through town. And they had a bookstore there. So like all authors who are curious to know, you know, is any, do they got, got any of my books out there? I went there. I no longer remember whether they got any of my book or not because I was so stunned when I saw they had a stack about a yard long, if not longer, of Ayn Rand books, fiction and nonfiction. And I, the manager came over and she, she could see that something, I had some interest in this. And I said, hi, let me ask you a question. Is this normal to have this? I see you really carry a lot of Rand's here, and that's, I'm, I'm a great admirer myself, but does this have any particular significance? And she said, yes, a whole new generation has just discovered Ayn Rand. And every few years, there's a new wave. And Ayn gave a sense of human possibility that was exactly what they were not getting at home or in their culture, young people, that is to say. She gave people the sense that they could be effective, that if they would persevere, stick by your standards, work hard, you can achieve something that you will be proud of. Find that part in you. Find, she would say, the hero in your own soul and work toward that. <laughs> a is A is, of course, Aristotle's law of non-contradiction. It's a way of saying, you know, identity, existence is identity, quoting Ayn Rand. That which is, is quoting Ayn Rand and a few other people. So it's a way of asserting simply that a fact is a fact. Objectivism is a, is a philosophy defined by Ayn Rand which holds reason as the sole source of reliable human knowledge that insists that a rational code of ethics is possible, is achievable by human beings, but the emphasis in that statement is rational. What is rational? Probably philosophers would have different opinions about that. I would understand it to simply mean on an almost common sense basis, which mean supported by available information, facts, and the respect for information. That is to say, respect for facts as they are made manifest to us. So it's not the rationalism as the term is used in philosophy where a person can divine all the secrets of the universe from reason. False. Reason is a process of achieving knowledge. It is not itself the knowledge. The idea that a highly rational person is not at the same time a passionately emotional one is completely false. In fact, Almost the opposite is true. In my work as a psychotherapist, I tell clients, feel deeply to think clearly. It is through emotions that we are able to experience the significance of various facts or events or perceptions as they pertain to our well-being or the lack thereof. So emotions are means of experiencing the joy of life and the pain of life, the pleasure of love and the pain of love when it is lost and so on. My point being that when we give up our defenses and our pretenses and our worry about how people will perceive us or interpret into what we've just said, if we are willing just to be simple and uncomplicated or put it out when it's relevant to express one's thoughts or feelings, then you have a mind you can talk to. Then you can understand the other person better and vice versa. Rand liked paradox. She enjoyed saying things that she saw, she thought would shock or surprise a little. But she certainly, she thought it was funny to call this group of alleged individualists uh, the collective. She thought it was funny because it was a paradox. At a party in my, in members of my home, we had a small dinner party among the guests with Mike Wallace. I, at a certain point in the evening, was trying to explain to the people there why she did not regard the Soviet Union as a serious military threat to the United States. And they were kind of surprised at that. And she said, look, it's almost impossible for an American 
to understand the level of incompetence, which is the norm in a, in a communist society. End of story. With regard to drugs in general, Rand would have been opposed to the kind of the recreational use of drugs. She would also be opposed to the government arrogating to itself the right to make it illegal. She would argue that people certainly have a right about what they put into their own bodies. So uh, we may say, well, we think a rational person wouldn't do this. But um, that led me to show her an article which I've been reading, which, which was suggesting that marijuana could confer some very interesting mental results that are worth experiencing. If you smoke it, or to take it in a biscuit. And I showed her the article, or I summarized her, I forget which. And I don't know what mood she was in that night, but she said, well, let's get some and try it. I almost passed out. I mean, I thought, this, 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 is, this is too much. I, tomorrow she won't remember this. It will let it be right now, because this is, I can't believe. Nobody will believe me. I was bothered. There was no way to name who am I. We didn't have objectivism yet, you know. And then somewhere, how I'm not, I have no idea how, I came across the word libertarian. And I gathered that that meant like a minimalist view of the proper functions of, 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 uh, of state, of the government. And uh, I said to Ian, I think that could be a very good name for our political philosophy because it's not a word in general use now. Uh, and we like to have something for us to call ourselves. So Ian says, we're advocates of lazy fair capitalism. I said, I am that doesn't do it because to, on two grounds. Number one, it puts the emphasis on business, as though the most important thing about libertarianism is business or the freedom of the marketplace. But we need something more broad, something like what it basically is philosophically, globally, not where it stands politically. But she was still using conventional language like a Republican, a conservative, not. And I would say to her, why do you commonly tell people you're a conservative. You're no more a conservative than, than, than my pussycat. You know, you're, uh, I said, none of us are. We're not Republicans and we're not conservatives. Why do you use that language? I can't understand that. And she thought, and she said, well, you're absolutely right. What we really are is something like radicals for capitalism. If you are going to offer a, a new and global code of ethics, as Rand saw herself doing, every code of ethics has to include something about redemption, has to include something about people making bad choices, even immoral choices, but pulling their life together, correcting whatever they did wrong as best they can, and getting on with their life. There is no treatment of regeneration of your life. There is no treatment of the motion from failure to success in the moral sphere. In errors of knowledge, we would say, well, of course, we can always correct errors of knowledge, but errors of morality. For example, somebody would say, um, Rand doesn't have any kind of truck for, for people who make mistakes. And they had another person there who says, well, that's not true. Yes, you did. Look at Hank Reardon and Atlas Shrugged. He made mistakes. I said, yeah, but they were not moral errors. They were errors of knowledge. And he was willing to pay the full price for those errors. But we're not talking about errors of knowledge. We're talking about errors of morality. That would have been such a great thing to put into that novel. If, if you had a, a, a bad guy who was almost as bad in some ways as the good guys, and then you show redemption, now you're talking about something. Because everybody on this planet has done things they wish they had done differently. And thus things they may be a little bit ashamed of now or embarrassed by now. So what? Welcome to the human race. The real thing should that separates in my books, the good guys and the not so hot guys is, what do you want to do about it now? Mm -hmm.